Hi everyone, it's NZ Tech Freak here, once again with a video for Android and Z.net. And what I wanted to share with you all today was something pretty cool uh, that I only got onto today, but I think has been available for a few days or perhaps even weeks already. And that's the fact that PlayStation 3 controllers now work with the Samsung Galaxy S2. Now, before you rush to the comments column to tell me that they always did work, providing you flashed to either the Cyanogen Mod ROM or the MIUI ROM, I am of course quite aware of that. Uh, the reason it worked on those ROMs is because they actually use the stock Android Bluetooth stack. The big problem with using a PlayStation 3 controller in those ROMs, at least from my point of view, is the fact that you lose the ability to output the, the phone screen to an external monitor and HDTV. And that's something I wasn't prepared to give up. I enjoy MHL a lot for either watching video or for playing games, particularly emulator gaming. So now that they work with the stock Bluetooth stack, you can enjoy games on your HD television via MHL in a way that you couldn't before. Now the thing that's making all of this possible, of course, is the 6-axis controller app, which is available from the Android market for the extremely low price of only $2. Now there is, of course, a little bit of setup involved in order to pair your PlayStation 3 controller with your Galaxy S2. There's an application you need to install on your PC, you need to connect your PlayStation PlayStation 3 controller to the PC and run through a few steps there and on the phone. Uh, unfortunately, the official guide at the 6-axis controller homepage isn't that user-friendly. I mean, obviously I followed it to get the result that you can see on the screen in front of you now, uh, but I did think it could be a little bit more user-friendly. So, with that in mind, I made my own guide with a kind of step-by-step, blow-by-blow analysis of what you need to do it all up and you can find that guide over at the blog AndroidNZ.net so if you're falling foul a little bit in terms of pairing it up with the instructions at the 6-axis controller website head over to the blog I think we've got you covered there with a much easier to follow guide. Of course what you can see on screen is me playing Riptide GP with the PlayStation 3 controller and Riptide updated several weeks ago now to include support for Bluetooth control pads which is really really excellent and the graphics are so good on the Riptide that even scaled up on the HDTV they actually look really good and the experience of course is just fantastic when you're using a Bluetooth controller rather than on screen controls. And what I'm cutting to now, of course, is the excellent PlayStation 1 emulator FPSE and playing a little bit of Tekken 3. And obviously you can't get better um, in terms of the gaming experience than playing a PlayStation 1 game and using a PlayStation controller. Uh, so of course you need to map the buttons within FPSE to play like this, but that's a pretty simple thing to do. And the other thing I guess it's worth pointing out is the 6-axis controller app will actually let you pair up to four controllers. So you could even blast out some four-player, which of course is just excellent. So basically, the Samsung Galaxy S2 is a PlayStation 1 in your pocket, as well as all the other things it can do. It's not limited, of course, to FPSC or Riptide. Almost all of the emulators are configurable to allow control with a Bluetooth controller. And fans of my other videos will know that I'm a big fan of Nintendo 64 gaming, even more so than original PlayStation 1 retro gaming. <coughs> and it works perfectly with that. You can map the controls and have up to four controllers within the 64 OID using 6 axis controller in the PlayStation 3 remote. So that was it basically, just to show you PlayStation 3 remotes are now working with the stock Samsung Bluetooth stack, which means of course that you still have the option of outputting your phone screen to an external monitor HD television, and the gaming experience is just excellent. And once again, just to point out that I've got a much better guide for how to peel all this up over at the blog on AndroidNZ.net. So that's NZ Tech Freak uh, signing off for AndroidNZ.net and we'll catch you next time with some videos showcasing uh, the recently released Shadow Gun, both playing it on a Galaxy S2 via Chain by 3D 
and also showing you just how good it is on something like an Asus Transformer where you can use a PlayStation 3 controller via USB. So that's all for today and we'll catch you back at the blog with a guide and some more stuff on Shadowgun in the coming days. Bye.